All right, here we go. Let's go. Good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Art Tipaldi. I'm the editor of Blues Music Magazine, one of the largest blues magazines in the country. Please check us out at bluesmusicmagazine.com or go to our Facebook page. Tonight here at Don O'Dell's Legends, we have one of the, the hot young guitar players coming out of New York City, Dave Fields. Dave, welcome to Don O'Dell's Legends. It's so an honor to be here. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And Dave, you know, you're from New York City and people think, oh, the blues, you gotta be from Chicago, you gotta come from Mississippi, New Orleans. New York, how did the blues find Dave Fields? Oh my God, well, the blues is everywhere in New York City, you know. It's the first thing I listened to as a kid, you know, uh -huh. blues, really. Yeah. You know, if you think about New York, I mean, you know, people really think New York, they think Broadway musicals. Right. We're not going there. Yeah. We're not going there. No, no. But, you know, my God, it's, it, think about it. It's, 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 it's just the fabric of what's in New York. People just don't realize it. Yeah. Yeah. You have a great culture of blues clubs I know in New York City. You know, Tribeca Blues, uh, Dan, is it Dan? That, well, actually, there's like Terra Blues. Terra Blues. Terra yeah. Blues, and you've got uh, BB King's with Seals, and you've got Dino Blues. Bar, you've got yeah. multiple Dino Bars. And there's blues in every club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Lone Star Cafe back in the 70s. Back in the days, all. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Is it Dan? Who, where's the place where Arthur um, Nielsen plays a lot? Dan? Oh, it's called uh, The Red Line. Okay, okay. And, uh, him and you know with Big Ed Sullivan and Papa Chubby comes in. Yeah, that's you know, right. All the New York guys. Yeah, New York guys. Papa Chubby, Michael Hill, Arthur yeah. Nielsen, yeah. Bill Perry, right? He did. Yeah, when yeah. he was around, he yeah. come there all yeah. the time. Yeah. Now, when did you get started playing music? We, was guitar your first instrument? You know, I grew up in the music business. My dad is a noted composer, arranger, producer, Sammy Forever Fields. And the way, what really got me into music and playing the blues specifically was one day when I was a kid, he used to play for us all the time. He's a virtuoso piano player. Yeah. He came in and started playing this Jerry Lee Lewis thing. And I was like, oh my God, I love that. And they made him play it over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And so, I don't know, I always wanted to play guitar. But he said, no, he's from my, my dad's from the South. He said, David, you're going to learn how to play piano first. So right, I had to play right. piano first. And, uh -huh. you know, from a young age, I grew up in the music business. So, right, right. You know, it's, when you were playing piano, were you taking lessons? Yeah, okay. I, I played by ear mm -hmm. mostly, and then I studied privately. Yeah, and what 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 were you playing like for piano? Were you playing classical pieces, you know, note by note? Or I ended up doing jazz? that later. Uh, I learned a lot of popular songs, mm -hmm. and you know, I used to listen to you know, I love fifties rock and roll, so I listened to like Bill Haley and the Comets, and love Little Richard. He just got inducted to the. Blues Hall he fame. did. He did. One of my idol, idols, you know. Yeah. And Jerry Lee Lewis, like I said. Sure. Chuck, okay. So Chuck Berry. Yeah. That's blues, right? Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. Were you able to take what you learned on the piano to the guitar easily? Oh, yeah. I think you can hear it. If okay. You can hear me play. Because I hear people say, I I found going from guitar to piano was so much easier because I could. It was all linear in front of me. Mm -hmm. What was it like going from piano to guitar? Interesting. You know, I was so young when I started playing. Um, it's there. There's things that are easier to play a piano, and there's things that are easier to play a guitar. I love the fact I can bend notes. You know, I can don't have to have the pitch locked in like yeah. a piano. Yeah, sure. So, sure. and as a guitar player, you mentioned some of the piano players who were your influences. Who were some of your influences as a guitar player that you were studying? So many, and there's so many diverse people. My dad, being a note, you know, he was a top session composer, arranger, producer. He made me listen to all the guys. And I'd go to recording sessions, and you know David Spinoza would be there, or John Trope, all these wow. heavy hitter guys. And, yeah. But Jimi Hendrix, obviously. I mean, you know. Yeah. No, I we'll loved, go. you know, um, Eric Clapton, and I loved um, so many guys. My God, I loved BB King, you know, and all the Kings, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All the usual guys, and I listened to a lot of jazz guys too, and I and. and People from all walks of life and just mix it into my playing. Right, right. Now, piano and guitar, both of those, you have to learn a different style for every guy. I mean, when you're playing BB King, you've got to play him so much differently than Freddie King, or right? Whatever. Um, some of the players who you got to meet and sit with growing up, who would they have been? Oh my God. Well, like I said before, you know, John Trope. Uh, God, I'm trying to think as a kid, there were so many. You know, a lot of, of jazz guys. guys. Yeah, yeah. I'll one of the blues guys who I saw in um, uh, the Hall of Fame, the Blues Hall of Fame you just mentioned, nice big little display was Hubert Sumlin. Yes, yeah, so I got to and, play with him. Too. And I know Hubert was a regular in New York City. Yep. Uh, Howlin' Wolf's guitar player made all those those famous lines. What's a Hubert Sumlin to Dave Fields? Oh my God, Hubert. Well, so many different levels. Musically, he was 
it was just a guy who was a trailblazer who influenced all my heroes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's important as a human being. He was an angel. He was just an amazing man who I would play with him, and every night he would do something that would just make my heart melt. I shouldn't be getting this way. Yeah. He'd make my heart melt. He he was just such a, a lovely man. I'm sure you got to hang out. I did. I did. His music leave was an amazing, and he just you know changed my life in terms of how to be how to be treat other people. He was right. so loving. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Spiritual. That's you know? right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are the real important lessons from the older guys: BB, Hubert, Pine Top. It's Bobby uh, Rush. I Bobby got to Rush. With Bobby Rush. Wow. Yeah. I got to play with him when he was in New York. You know, and uh, and I got to hang out with him backstage at the Blues Music Awards. And he just said the most beautiful things. I forgot what he said. It was something like. <laughs> I got to the point in my age, I want to just teach people about love or something about it. I'm yeah. Sure spread love in that. Just, yeah. Wow. yeah. 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 I mean, those guys teach you how getting, to. You know, my, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. Those guys, those guys teach you how to carry yourself in this musical genre, how to you know, navigate it. Yeah. Um, and speaking of navigating, so what does a day field do once you start playing professionally music? I mean, are you just gigging within the city? You said your dad's a famous producer, session man. Does a record come like that deal to you, or is a record deal important? It's interesting. Well, first of all, to answer your first question, I've yeah. been touring all over the United States, mostly from the Midwest and East, mm -hmm. working on getting over to the West Coast. Right. Um, I've done. A, I've got. I'm getting ready to do a run back. I was just in the Midwest, and back to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I'm playing Florida, you know, all over Atlantic Seaboard, and I've been playing a lot in Europe. Um, yeah, I will be in Europe three times this summer, which is exciting. That's so good. I'm ex focusing on having international reach and a national reach. So yeah, yeah. What's the hardest thing about expanding your reach and your audience? It, it's always I wake up every day and I think about marketing. Yeah, it's yeah. all about marketing. You know, the yeah. social media thing, and mm -hmm. you know, breaking through the noise of everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. How do you? How do you? Utilize social media. I mean, how does that? He wasn't there for Hubert Sumlin and Jerry Lee Lewis and Chuck Berry. You know how? Yeah, but they had the power of a record label. I'm an independent did. blues rock artist. Blues, blues rock. rock. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm doing it all myself. You know, and uh, you know, I've had people help me. I had some amazing help in the past with people. And, uh, mm -hmm. So now that I'm doing it by myself, it's just a matter of being diligent and persistent and focused. And yeah. Clear yeah. Clear headed. How do you use social media to to get your name out there? Is well, it just is it just a matter of going on every day, going going to be in Palmer, hope to see you guys there? Is that I, well, I do posts on um, uh, <laughs> my website, <laughs> all four Facebook pages. Yeah, all send four. out a, a mailing, a different two different mailing lists of letters that go out. And yeah, then, you know, uh, so many things. My God, I'm constantly on the computer. You're doing social networking. You have right. to. You're your own publicist then? Uh, I have so Rick Lusher is, is my publicist. And okay. Had, for this last CD, and Betsy Brown has been. Oh, you have Betsy. That's good too. She's awesome. They're both great. So, so in that way, they can advance you when you're going to a city right. and, and let the local media know that you're going to be there. Um, Europe. How about, how, what's the reception of Dave Fields in Europe? Oh, God, it's been awesome. I'm, I feel so blessed, Art. You know, um, yeah. People have really embraced me, and yeah. I'm, I, I'm so thankful I've got a great following there, and yeah. that they keep inviting me back. So Yeah, the difference between your American notoriety and your European notoriety, what's that? Well, I've got a really good following in Scandinavia, which is, you know, thanks to my buddy J.T. Larson, you know, who I love, who's like, you know, like family to me. And yeah. They just, they love what I'm doing, and it's growing. It's just all about growing, spreading the word, people knowing about what I'm doing. So yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that's another reason why I'm so excited to... Finally, in this interview with him, we've talked about know. it for so long. I know. I'm like, yeah, like, ah. yeah. How long? You know, you keep saying growing. It's growing. It's moving. You know, you have what two CDs out or four? Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how how recent a phenomenon is Dave Fields? Have you been out there for 20 years? Have you been out there touring from the east to the Midwest for 15 years? I'll tell you an interesting story. A lot of people will know this about me, but I had a I have a career. I have a company called Fields Music Inc. and my career really was, uh, you know, I did a lot of TV commercials and radio commercials. You know, I worked at a big jingle house in New York City, and wow. I finally decided, you know, I want to do this. I mean, I'm, I was born to play guitar in front of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's great to make money and to do that. You can in New York City, you can do those kind of gigs. You can get a gig on Broadway and retire. Right. <laughs> that's not why I'm here. Yeah. 
So it really has been since 2007. Okay. After being a side man for everybody. Right. And making them, you know, help them with their dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So since 2007, I've really made it a big push to be the solo artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really only been eight years. Okay. Me. Okay. So in that time, eight years, what's the most difficult of the of the of the skills? Guitar playing, singing, or songwriting? Of those three? Yeah. They're all probably equally challenging. The hardest thing, believe it or not, is, is marketing and getting your name out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really what it's you gotta about. You got to look at that every day. And I practice every day like a madman, and I work, and I uh, just constantly juggling all these different things. And plus, I'm a dad. I've got a nine-year-old son. Congratulations. So, which you'll hear a song that I wrote about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which do you work hardest at, singing, guitar playing, or songwriting? Probably uh, the songwriting and the songwriting and guitar playing. Yeah, you think the singing is, the, is your... A plus? No, the guitar plays the A plus. Yeah, it's probably worth more than singing. I shouldn't be saying that. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I thought if you've been playing guitar as long as you've been playing, you're probably, that's your comfort zone. It is, it is. Yeah. And I feel comfortable, you know, producing people in the studio and songwriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you yeah. got me thinking about my singing. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> You know, it's funny, I was talking to Mike Welch down in, uh, in Memphis, mm -hmm. and he said, I look at a CD, it's just a calling card. Right. And it's basically, this is what I do. And I thought, that's really what it is. It's true. You I know, agree. It's, uh, it's, it opens the door. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the lessons you think, I mean, we talked a little bit about Hubert and, and some of the other guys, what they've taught you, the, the, the um, I forget who the other one was, Bobby Rush, mm -hmm. but what, what's your dad, now that you look back, what, what might be the most important couple of things you could say, yeah, he taught me that? Believe it or not, to, to try to, to be, uh, treat everybody with kindness and respect. Mm -hmm. You know, more so than anything is to be, you know, a mensch, as he used to always say. Be, yeah, be a be mensch. A mensch. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Disclose my, my heritage. And I, I really think that's important to yeah. try to try to do that. That's, yeah. You know, because at some point everybody can play. It's a matter right. of being, you know, a kind person giving to the world. So. Sure, sure. And what's he taught you about the music business that somebody might not know without having the benefit of your dad as your dad? So many things. Let's just say one thing on a musical level is, um, I could pick so many, is uh, yeah. this having certain musical sensibilities that fit in with what you're doing. And, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many, I guess you'd write a book about yeah. it. Yeah. I'm yeah. constantly talking to my, mus my musicians about it. My dad really trained me. Mm -hmm. He trained me to be a musical hitman and... Right, yeah. right. So. I'm sure he taught you about the importance of writing your own music too. And he did. Yeah. You know, he did. Not my dad would work with Sammy Kahn. Oh boy. He wrote with uh, so many people. He was a musical director for Jerry Lewis, all these famous comedians, Rodney Dangerfield. You know, I missed school and I'd go hang out with him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was a musical director to Copacabana at yeah. the Latin Quarter. He was, he was a heavy hitter. Wow. Wow. Boy. And those are some lessons again that those are priceless. You know. To, I think one thing my dad did was he, he taught me to have a good attitude to be positive. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. So now where does Dave Field see himself in three, four, five years? Well, I, well <laughs> I'd like to see myself have more name recognition within, you know, the market I'm doing. I'd like to see myself yeah. playing more countries in, in Europe yeah. and uh, play the bigger festivals, which I've been doing here yeah. in, in the U.S. and just expand out the specific rim and Onto my sixth CD. I mean, I've right. got. I write out all my goals. I could keep going. Guys. Yeah, I'll yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop at that. Right, right. I'm very goal oriented. Cross them off once you've done them. Yeah, yeah. and add new ones. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, David, thank you very much for stopping by and and sharing your story and some of your insights with us. Thank we you. Really it's been an honor it. to be here. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, you're Dave. awesome. Thank you. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Art Tapaldi. This is Don O'Dell's Legends tonight. Dave Fields, New York blues rock guitarist. Thank you.